Hey, this is Nick from JingFX. I'm going to show you how to create a tornado effect from scratch inside of Embergen. The first thing that we want to do is drag off the force pin on the simulation node and spawn in a force line. What this node allows us to do is create a force field well, around a line. And so in this case right now we are pushing the fluid upwards and so we want to make sure that we don't do that as much. So we're going to say 0.2. Then we're going to change our twist strength to 0.5. And we're going to add in a little bit of chaos so that it's not a perfect force field and adds a little bit of variation. Then what we can do is we're going to go into the emitter node and we're going to go to the emission tab, fuel emission and no emission. For the smoke rate we want to change this to 65% so that we get more smoke. Then we're going to go over to the simulation node and click the force tab, then block Z ground and block ceiling. And this allows it so that the force field is a bit stronger and more contained. I found that I get better results by blocking the ceiling and the ground. It also prevents some pressure errors that we have. We also want to change the force tightness to 1%. And what that allows is for a tighter interaction with the force field. And 1% seems low, but it's actually quite high for this particular parameter. And so you can see that if we change it to say just 10%, the amount that it slows down and strictly follows the force field is much greater. And so this 1% is actually probably more like 10%. So now what we can do is go over to the shape primitive node and we're going to change our shape to a cylinder. And then we're going to change our radius to two and the height to 12. Then let's go ahead and break up the shape a little bit with some noise so we can drag off the shapes pin on the emitter. We're going to use a blend modifier we can double click this line to disconnect it and then drag off shape B and let's add in some shape noise. We're going to change our scale maybe to eight. I think that looks pretty good. And so now we have some pretty good variation on our emitter here. You can see that in general, our tornado is looking pretty decent. Let's add a little bit of height before we do the next thing. And so we're going to go to the simulation size tab and do 384 on Z and we'll leave everything else as is click apply new resolution and now our tornado is a bit taller. Then let's go into the emitter node. And we're going to click transform. And we're going to expose the rotation uh, pin to the node graph. And you can do that by double clicking the little uh, circle. We're going to add in a cycle node and this basically allows you to get easy rotations with a saw wave. And so we're going to change mode one to none and do the same to mode 2. Then for our frequency, since we're spinning our force line at 0.5, we're going to use the same hertz uh, for our rotation of the emitter. And you can now see that the emitter is in fact rotating at the same rate as the tornado. So then we don't need to see the emitter anymore now that we've got it just how we want it. And so inside of the visuals tab under emitter, we can uncheck show emitter. Now we have a pretty neat tornado. But the thing is, is that there's not a whole lot of variation within the emission of this. So what we can do is inside the emitter node, go to the forces tab, and we're going to change the velocity transfer to maybe 80%. What this is going to do is it's going to add rotational velocity and expand the density or the smoke as it's being emitted and add in additional forces. And you can see that if we increase it to 200%, kind of what it's doing. So we'll go back down to 80 and then for the simulation, let's go to vorticity and let's add in some large vorticity so that we can get extra breakup in this. And then let's just change our, our main vorticity intensity to 30. And now we have a little bit more detail. One of the last things we want to do for the actual simulation is we're going to drag off the forces pin again on the simulation and we're going to add in a force noise. Now one thing that I should mention about forces on the simulation versus the emitter is forces that are plugged into the simulation node are global and will be affected you know, by the entire simulation so it fills the entire bounds. But forces that are plugged into the emitter are actually masked by the emitter. So in this case this force noise that's plugged into the emitter by default it's masked exactly by the cylinder and so that force will only take place inside of the shape and not outside of it. So with that out of the way, we have the force noise selected that's plugged into the simulation. We're going to change our amplitude to maybe 0.2 or 0.5. That's going to give us just a bit of extra variation. And now we already have a pretty good tornado effect. From here, you can play with your twist strength, your push strength, 
various noises. You can test different emitter shapes. You can change your cycles. You can go through and play with vorticity, you know, change your force tightness, unblock either of these grounds, and just kind of play with this. And from here, this is a, a pretty good starting point for any tornado, and this is the gist of what you need to create the tornado. The last thing I'll show you is a little bit of simple shading uh, work. So we can go ahead and change our light intensity to 3. Let's change our inherent sun color to 0 so that it doesn't inherit any color from the light uh, from the skybox. And then also on light ambient, we want to make sure that it doesn't inherit any of that color as well. So now we're seeing a better, true representation of what the colors actually are uh, as we select them. So instead of the shading node, let's go ahead and change our sharpness. And we're going to increase our ambient occlusion a little bit. And then we can also change our smoke shadow density maybe to 200. And then in the smoke tab, we're going to select color. And I have one that's already made. And the color for that is 56493D if you want to mess around with it. And so from there, uh, that's looking pretty decent. We can go back to this and kind of lower our ambient occlusion maybe. And then go to scattering and maybe increase our occlusion and increase our direct light contribution maybe to 75. And I think that looks pretty good. One thing that I will note is that you will see that there is like a ring on the ground. And that is from the scattering. Um, from the sun. It's kind of a bug. We shouldn't have that there, but hopefully we can fix it soon. And so there you go. That is creating a tornado effect from scratch. So one additional piece of information that I found after recording this tutorial is that if we add in a second line force with a negative 20 twist strength using quadratic fall off a line segment a length of one and then the average position that we would use or the normal one uh, we actually get a much larger tornado effect and we get kind of a a cool ground suction at the bottom which I thought was pretty cool and I guess this is because it's a, a different type of disturbance and it's kinda you know sucking the extra stuff off the ground or whatever so I thought this was cool and that I'd show it and add in that additional tip uh, hope that this helps you make some pretty cool tornadoes there's a lot of great stuff that you can do as I said and uh, good luck